You're very welcome back to the show. Now, my next guest is a clinical hypnotherapist, TEDx speaker and best-selling author. Her latest book, The Self-Love Habit, explains the importance of loving yourselves through four powerful habits. Listen, open, value and energise. Fiona Brennan, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Elaine. Delighted to be here with you. Now, your first As book... In the virtual world. I know, I know, I know, God. And we do have to keep positive and we do have to love ourselves more than ever. It's becoming increasingly more difficult. Now, tell us what was different about this book as opposed to your first book. Well, this book, Elaine, is actually quite deeper in the sense that the first book is, you know, really practical, mindfulness-based uh, book that helps us to self-generate positive emotions. This book is much more about really digging that bit deeper into the most important relationship that we have in our lives. And that is the relationship with ourselves. And um, as Oscar Wilde once said, to love oneself is the beginning of a lifelong romance. And I do absolutely concur to that, that, you know, when you have a really good, solid uh, relationship with yourself, then life is, is so much more um enjoyable uh you have resilience for the challenging times you're much more um beautiful to be around in terms of your energy uh so you know one of the real messages i want to get across in the book is that self-love is the most selfless love of all uh, and that it does take courage as well in terms of digging deep to the parts of ourselves lane you know that we we find more difficult to love whether that's anxiety, fear, stress, uh, irritability, you know, we all have these uh, sort of shadow parts that can be more challenging. But by accepting them without judgment, we tend to have a much more strong chance of, of thriving in the world and not just uh, yeah. surviving. How do we, why do we find it so difficult to love ourselves in the first place, though? Well, Elaine, there's so many reasons. And I'd say one of the biggest ones really is that we're not uh, taught to love ourselves. If anything, you know, especially um, my generation, you know, it, it really was almost the, the message was the opposite in, in many ways, that self-love was selfish, that we must put other people first. And that is true in the sense, you know, we have to, you know, to, to do our, our best to help other people. But what I've learned through my own lifetime, and I think that's becoming more apparent now in these days in terms of, you know, the awareness of mental health, et cetera, is that in order to really be there for other people, you have to be there for yourself first. So I would say conditioning is one of the blocks to, to self-love. That's why people find it so difficult, because it, it sort of goes against the grain. It feels like, who am I to, 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 to love myself? You know, the sort of vanity or the boasting um, element of it and actually it's got nothing to do with that you know people who who love themselves are actually free of the ego it's it's more that if you you know sort of need a lot of attention and um are putting yourself you know first as in being selfish then quite often there's an insecurity there and um, so the book is incredibly good at, at as like a manual like my first book it's similar in that sense is that it will help the yeah. reader to guide them yeah when I suppose I look at kids, little small toddlers, and they love themselves so much. I mean, you're, you've got beautiful eyes. I know that's a lovely dress. I know. And they're all very, they're very content in themselves. They're very strong in themselves. We condition ourselves to fall out of love with ourselves and not like ourselves as much. Now, how is it easy? I know it's clearly not easy to get that back. But how do you get that back without absolutely uh, uh, slating yourself in the process because it's a difficult process. It is. It's a, and it is a lifelong process. As you say, like we're naturally able to do that. And what I'm really helping uh, the reader and also my clients here, you can see I'm in my office right now. This is where I do my work every day. And, and it's about helping people to really um, build up the practice of mindfulness in terms of loving self-awareness. Um, so it is a skill, it is an art, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, and I think that is really important, a message to get to get through, you know, that what we're trying to do is not fix uh, anyone, but to really return to that state that you were saying, Elaine, in terms of, you know, just being able to look at yourself without judgment. Um, uh, and that's what, what, what children and toddlers do naturally. So it is within us, yeah. but we just need to, to find it again. And it comes through 
letting go quite often of a lot of baggage and, and negative self-beliefs that we've picked up over the years. And yeah. we all have them. You know, there's nobody that doesn't have them. Yeah. Um, you have a, a lot of famous faces as well in this book. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, well, what I wanted to do really was, I think that, you know, when people look at, as you say, famous people, for example, Roz Purcell is one of the people interviewed in the book, um, and people can have misconceptions about their life being perfect. And, you know, if you have all of that, it must be uh, so easy, etc., which is absolute nonsense in a sense. And I think Roz is brilliant at that. And that's really why I was delighted that she um is in the book because she speaks so authentically about, um, you know, the sort of the filter, if you like, of Instagram and, and then shows the reality, which is brilliant, you know, shows the real mm -hmm. picture. And one of the themes in the book is the divide itself. So I asked, you know, um, a number of well-known people to talk about that in terms of their public persona and their private persona. And, you know, no matter who you are, we all have a public persona in terms of what is what are we trying to present to the world? What kind of um, perception do we want other people to have of us? And ultimately, what we want is that that private and that public part of ourselves start to merge more. So we're not having to put on an act, if you like, and try to act confident, but we genuinely feel a sense of ease and peace and calmness within ourselves. Yeah. Um, and Niall Bresen actually also wrote the foreword for the book. And one of the things that he, you know, I was so delighted when I read the foreword was that he really um, allows the, the reader to understand how important it is to engage with it. There are no shortcuts when it comes to um, positive mental health that you need to take the scenic route. And he encourages the reader to do that. And I think that's a very helpful thing to do at the beginning of a book, you know, that, yes, it is self-help, but it also requires, um, you know, the, the, the reader's commitment. And I think that mm -hmm. anything we do in life requires that effort uh, to, to really see the benefits. Now, at the moment, we're experiencing a mental health disorder epidemic in the country. We're a year into lockdown. People are suffering very, very badly at the moment. Even if you've never had an anxious day in your life, uh, things are getting on top of people now. What advice would you give to anyone out there who's struggling? Well, I think that, you know, I'm seeing it. I, I, I've said it before. I've never worked so hard in, my, in the last year as I have in terms of helping to keep people buoyant and to keep people feeling better. There is, of course, a lot of anxiety. And I think that acceptance of that is the first. We've got to start by accepting it. You know, there's no point resisting it and, and, and trying to fight it. So, you know, now is the time. I think this book is, is coming out at the right time in terms of when you can actually learn how to to manage those emotions, to realize that you are not the emotion itself, that the fear is there, but it doesn't have to be all consuming. We need to do that for ourselves because what it does, Elaine, is it's like a gift for other people. You know yourself, if you meet someone and they're highly anxious, it can have a kind of like, it can spread like a virus, like fear is very contagious. So the more that we tend to our own anxiety and help ourselves to feel as calm as we can, well, we're, we're boosting our immune system at the same time. So it's a very positive thing to do from that perspective. But we're also helping the people around us to feel safer and to feel calmer. Yeah. So taking this time to, to, to really build that relationship with yourself is an opportunity. We are going to come out of this. We're going to come out of it stronger um, when we, we put that work in now. So processing the emotion is really, really important. And we're all feeling it in different ways. Yeah. There isn't, again, anyone who goes untouched. Yeah, I know you've, you've a presence on Instagram that I know many people find very, very helpful. And also for anyone watching now who needs a bit of help loving themselves, your book, The Self-Love Habit, is out now in all good bookstores. Fiona Brennan, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks, Elaine. Now we'll take a quick break. We'll be back here with the lads in three.